Hey guys, what's up everyone? Welcome back to another video from the Apex Predator Billiards Club. My name is Apex Lenya. And in today's video, we're gonna be looking at a part two series of the SID system for one reel kicks. Of course, in part one, which I have a link placed in the description below, and also a link right here for you, where you can go ahead and watch part one. We talked about kicking at object balls that are lying on the end rail and we're kicking from the side rail. Of course, I got a few comments from you guys asking me variations in the geometry. And of course, in future tutorials, I will explain to you how the geometry works. But for the most part, the SID system is used for kicking at object balls when you're kicking from the side rail, when the object ball is close to the end rail, or like in this video, we're kicking from the end rail to the side rail here. This system is a very precise, a very accurate and of course a very reliable system when it is that you are in some complicated safeties and you just need to get contact on the object ball. Of course, you're going to need to put some time in on the table, get used to the system and just get used to the numerical calculations. A couple of comments came on the channel asking me what if it is that we are playing with a shot clock. This is not something you're going to do in an actual game when you're learning it for the first time. You're gonna have to spend some time with it, learn the process of the calculation, learn the principles, and then of course, you're gonna be very, very effective when you're in some tough spot, all right? So, without further ado, let's jump right into the video, but before we do so, consider dropping a like on the video, turning on your post notification bell, smash the subscribe button to be notified whenever there are more tutorial videos posted on my channel. And without further ado, let's jump into the video and add some more power to your kick game. Let's get it, let's go. All right guys, so like I said, in part one, we talked about kicking from the side rail here towards an object ball that is on the end rail. Now in part two, we're gonna be kicking from the end rail here at a ball that is on the side rail. We're gonna look at the calculations, the precision, what you need to consider, how it is that you're gonna play these shots. And hopefully on a good day, when you're feeling good, you may be able to pocket these balls in the corner. All right, so let's look at the calculations. So before we jump into the calculations, let's look at the diamond number rings for the side rail. If it is that the object ball is on the side rail here, then of course we're going to start here by calling this diamond here 1, okay, 2. After we pass the 2 diamond increment, then we start to increase by increments of half diamond. So 2 and a half, 3, 3 and a half, 4, 4 and a half, and of course the pocket here is five. And that is a diamond numbering for the object ball when it's on or near to the side rail. Now, for the cue ball now, the cue ball is usually gonna be along this end rail here, or perhaps uh, we can extend the system when the object ball, when the cue ball, pardon me, is on this side rail here. So of course, the cue ball is counted by diamond increments of one. So here is one, this would be zero if the cue ball was here. Then this is one, two, three, four. Now as we bend around the corner now for the cue ball, then we start to increase by diamond increments of half. So this is four and a half, five, five and a half, six. All right, and we can go on and on if it is that we so desire. So now to demonstrate how the system is, work, how the system is applied on a full table i'm going to place my cue ball here at diamond number two right and i already have my object ball here at this first diamond here which is four and a half now one thing that you need to be very aware of when you're using this system is that you're not always going to be choosing the diamond that the object ball is directly adjacent to Okay, because what's gonna happen is that sometimes, or not sometimes, most of the times, if it is that you do that, the ball tends to go a little bit short. It may catch the rail here, slide past the, the object ball, or it might just catch it thin, and you, know, you, you, you perhaps will make a contact, but you won't make the contact that you desire. So I'm gonna show you the variations in how you do the calculation. Now, if it is that you were to pick, say for example, as we have it here, the object ball is on, diamond four and a half, then if we say two multiplied by four and a half, we're gonna get nine. So what's gonna happen is that nine is going to be like, maybe like about a point one of a diamond increment here. 
So if it is that we aim at diamond nine, then the cue ball would actually be coming here because what you need to understand is that the cue ball is not coming at the real groove in front of the diamond. It is actually coming at the diamond. So where we predict that the cue ball may be coming, when we use this system, if you're not aware of this variance, then we tend to always come a bit short and then we say the system doesn't work. So what you always have to do is always try to choose a diamond that is below your. So rather than choosing 4.5, we're gonna be choosing five, okay? So if we take two and we multiply it by five, we're gonna get 10. So if you look carefully here, as you can see, if I were to aim at diamond 10, then the cue ball will be coming towards this pocket here, right here. So we have a very good chance of making the one and making good contact on the one. Let's create a situation here. Let's say that um, we are blocked by the five here and we just need to make contact with the one. All right, so what's going to happen here is that I'm going to be aiming at 10. Now, what I don't want is that I want to kind of come into the near cushion. So I'm going to adjust maybe, say I'm going to aim at about 9 or I'm going to aim at 10. Okay, and let's see if we can make really good contact and pocket this one. So we just play this cue ball here with natural cue ball top spin. Okay. I'm just nice and stroke this cue ball down into the diamond. And that was a nice shot on the one there. You can see the cue ball went towards the diamond number five here and we were able to make a good shot on the one. Okay, so let's put the object ball now. Let's move it up here, like say about here. And we're gonna move the cue ball here at diamond three. All right, so here we go. So we're gonna pick, let's say, if we were to pick, say, diamond four, because remember this is one, two, two and a half, three, three and a half, four. If we were to say, pick diamond four, if we multiply three by four, we will get 12. So 12 is about two diamond increments in this direction from 10, so this is about here. So let's imagine that the cue ball was coming from 12 here. It would actually be coming in towards four like this. And so the cue ball would hit this area here and would actually miss the five ball. So that means we cannot choose diamond four, which again emphasizes the point that you're not supposed to pick the diamond that is adjacent to the object ball. Always pick a diamond that is below or in between um, the diamond below where you are trying to make contact with. So here what I'm going to choose is I'm going to choose diamond 4.5 here. All right. And so 3 multiplied by 4.5, that's going to give me 13.5. So if I take here 11, 12, 13, maybe about here, I will see that from 13.5 there, I should be coming in towards diamond 4.5 and have a very good chance of making contact with the object ball here and actually getting a good chance to pocket the ball. So here we go. I'm actually not trying to make the five ball, but if I make it, I'm in good standing. So let's do it here. So let's visualize where 13.5 is. So that's 11, 12, 13. That's about 13.5 here. And I want to come into the cushion. So maybe I'm just going to just aim at 13 here. All right, so I did make good contact on the five. Again, I am not trying to make the five ball. If I do make it, that would be fantastic. But I did make very good contact on the five ball, provided that I was actually snookered on that ball. All right, so you can see that the system is very reliable. Now, let's try to put a ball here, okay? Usually, you might end up with a situation where you're really hooked here. Let's place it, let's keep, let's keep it at here. Okay, in the corner pocket. And we, we are snookered for some reason, we're snookered here, all right? And we have that five ball in the side. Now, a lot of persons may be able to kick this using a natural feel, no problem with that, 
all right but when you want a system where your object balls in the way all right and you need to have a really good reference to where you need to aim to actually make good contact on the five here this sit system here is very reliable all right so let's get into it here uh again as i said before do not pick a diamond that is adjacent to the five pick a diamond that is below the five here so this is one again two two and a half three i'm not gonna pick three i'm gonna pick three and a half so i know now that the cue ball is at four so four times three and a half that's going to give me 14. so i should say here that okay one two three four 14 is just maybe like a diamond increment away from the first diamond from the middle of the first diamond and the second diamond so about here 14. so if i choose 14 here i should be coming right i should be able to make very good contact if i perhaps over hit the ball or shift maybe like to the 13th diamond here then i may catch the reel here drop the five i may drop the five in thin i don't know let's see but i have a very good reference here from which i'm going to be aiming at so i'm thinking about aiming at 14 here i'm looking to meet the five because it's very close to the pocket so let's see let's double check on our calculations four multiplied by three that's 12 and four multiplied by half that's two so two plus 12 is 14. Okay, so one, two, three, four, that's 14, that's the middle. So that's about there. So if I aim at 14 here from this position, okay, I should be able to make the five or make good contact with the five. All right, so that took me actually a couple of tries to really pocket that ball, but you get the whole idea of how the system works all right so it's very reliable i hope that you enjoy those couple of shots we're just gonna do state do one last example here and extend the system to around here all right so once we start to bend around the corner here now we start to go up say by half diamond increment so this is four four and a half this is five okay and let's say i have the two ball here and I'm actually just trying, let's, let's pretend that this is a situation here. We have the two, okay? Let's say we are snookered, all right? And I'm actually trying to make the two. I make the two, I have position on the three. The four is here, the six is here, the seven is here. And let's perhaps imagine that the nine ball was somewhere there. I'm actually going to try to make this two ball here. So let's do our calculations, all right? So first of all, one, two, three, four, four and a half. I think I am at five, okay? Again, just like the object ball do not choose a diamond that is adjacent from the cue ball because you're not shooting from here you're shooting from this diamond here okay so you're choosing a diamond that is below your cue ball here so i'm gonna select diamond five now my object ball here i'm gonna say i'm gonna double check on my calculations i'm gonna choose diamond four here so diamond five multiplied by diamond four that gives me 20. So if I aim here at 20, all right, guys, you can see here that I have a very, 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 very good chance here of actually making contact with the two ball because the cue ball will be coming in this direction here. So I might be able to clip the two thin. If I wanted to actually make it, I'll perhaps just adjust maybe by a diamond or a half, like a half of a point diamond here to get into the corner to pocket that two. So let's see here, all right? So five multiplied by four, that's 20. So if I aim here, I know that I should be able to make contact with the two, but if I really wanna get into that, I'm just gonna perhaps just adjust a little bit here. Let's see. I really got into that one here and I did make contact with the two. I actually didn't sell out, provided that this was actually a real game. But there you can see that the SID system here for one way kicking is actually very reliable. You can use this system, as I said, when you're kicking off the end rail here or the side rail, kicking at a ball that is near or on the side rail on the opposite side, or when you're kicking from the long rail here to the end rail, this system is very accurate. So do put some time in on the table 
when it comes to using this system spend some time get used to it and hopefully you guys can get yourself out of some more complicated safety whenever you're playing against a strong opponent all right so i hope you enjoy this video this part two i will have a lot more kicking videos for you in the future but before you do so be sure to smash that subscribe button below guys um links are in the description you can definitely contribute towards my growth my channel uh the paper link is below the cash app link is below and i'm uh, just looking forward to just talking to some of you guys in the comments and just let me know what it is that you think about this system do take care until next time this is apex you signing out and we will see you soon in another tutorial video bye bye